the city of Ontario, we're very lucky. We have beautiful fire engines, and we have four firefighters on every fire engine. That's not true in every city. So we make sure we have plenty of manpower. We also have two paramedics on every fire engine. That also is not true in every city. We feel very privileged to work in a city where we have to support the equipment and the personnel we need to provide proper, safe, and optimal patient coverage to you people. So the paramedics are here. They see they've got an injured person. And right now, the captain realizes, hey, this guy is hurt. We can't just pull him out of there. Because the number one thing we're worried about is a spinal injury. We're afraid if we just rip this guy out, we might injure his neck or spine and he could be paralyzed. So it's time to call the truck company. So here comes the truck. And you'll notice, this is the other little bit of jealousy. They're bigger, right? They're bigger. <laughs> So here comes the truck company, and they've got all the tools it's going to take to take this car apart so we can safely get the passenger out. Now, you'll notice even before we do that, our paramedics are starting patient care. They're going to put on a C collar, a cervical collar. They're going to start an IV. They're going to get his vitals. They can start administering medications. Uh, just so you know, red helmets, those are captains. Those are the guys who are in charge of the scene. You notice he's coming in here to coordinate. He's going to say, hey, Cap, what do we got? What do you need? How can I help? How do we solve this problem? That right there is Captain Kearns. He's been on the Ontario Fire Department 35 years. Let's hear a hand for Captain Kearns. Does that look fun? <laughs> That's fun, but there's a reason for it. We're gonna be bending a lot of metal. We're gonna be tearing the doors off. So we break the windows on purpose so we know when they're gonna break. We don't want it breaking on accident when we're not prepared. So you notice we just put a firefighter in there because we want someone in there with the patient. We want our hands on the patient. Plus, we want to explain what's happening. Imagine how scary it would be if you were in that car and were ripping it apart and breaking the windows and you didn't know what was going on. So we put a firefighter in there with the patient to explain what's going on, make sure they're stable, and keep everything under control for them. So we're breaking the windows out. This is a hydraulic power unit. That's going to power all the hydraulic tools. You've probably all heard the term jaws of life. Oh, we've got the jaws of life. Well, that's a generic term for our tool system. They're AMCUS hydraulic power tools, and they're what we're going to use to rip this car apart. This is engineer Jerome Nellison. He's in charge of all the tools and equipment on that fire truck over there. Jerome's been with the apartment 37 years. Let's have a round of applause for engineer Jerome Nellison. As the truck company likes to say, they show up with all the big boy toys. So we've got paramedic here in the truck in the uh, in the car providing patient care. You notice we put a blanket over the patient. We don't want all that broken glass flying around, cutting him, injuring him, getting him in his eyes. We're setting up the tools. You'll notice this takes a minute. This doesn't happen just like that. And you'll notice also everybody's calm. They walk up, hey Cap, what do you need? There's no running around and screaming like in the movies. Everybody's calm, everybody's in control. That way nobody gets hurt. If you see a bunch of firemen running around screaming, there's probably something wrong. So, first thing we're doing, we're gonna get rid of all the glass. Get the glass out of the car. Glass can hurt people. We don't like glass, get rid of it. 
This is a cool tool. Watch how he can cut the windshield with this special glass saw. He'll cut right through it. Imagine what you could do to your neighbor's car if you didn't like it. <laughs> So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut open the side of this car, and when I say we, I mean them. They're going to cut open the side of the car, and we're going to get the patient out. We're going to get him on a board, keep his back and spine stable, and then we can transport him to the hospital. And then, just to demonstrate, we're going to go ahead and cut the rest of this car apart because it's cool and it's fun to watch. You'll notice they flatten the tires. The other thing we want to do is stabilize the car. The whole point here is to keep the patient moving as little as possible. So they flatten the tires so it doesn't bounce around. They've chopped underneath, which means they've jammed stabilizing wood underneath. And you can see here they're cutting this door open. We break the car down into parts so we know what we're talking about. This is called the A pose. This is the B post, and this is the C post. What they're doing is cutting the whole B post out of the car, and that way they can swing the whole side of the car open. As I said, we're having a hard time removing the patient from the car, so what we're going to do is remove the car from the patient. Nice thing about all this, it's all portable. We can do this up on the freeway, 3 a.m. in the pouring rain. We can do it on a city street, anywhere we need to go. All this equipment is portable, it's mobile. You can see the giant power cord coming over here. So we can power electric tools. We've got uh, generator power tools. That the truck company is just a big toolbox we bring to the problem. comes our ambulance, our gurney. We can get the patient out, put him on the board, roll him off. We'll send him to the hospital with some fire department paramedics. Basically, once again, what we've done is bring the emergency room out here to the accident scene. Okay. This is where the advantage of having proper manpower comes in. People sometimes say, why do they need to go to a medical aid, a heart attack, uh, a car accident? It's not a fire. Why do they have a fire engine and four guys? You can't do this with two people. You can't do this with three people. Now imagine doing this, like I say, if the car is upside down, if it's the middle of the freeway in the middle of the night. How many car accidents have only one car? Mm -hmm. Almost none, right? Usually we're dealing with two or three cars. That's why we show up with enough manpower to get the job done. Because if you get there and you're there for 10 or 15 minutes and you decide, hey, I wish I had more manpower, let's call another fire engine, it's too late then. You've got to arrive on the scene with the resources you need right away. And that's why we're lucky to work for the City of Ontario Fire Department because we have excellent equipment, excellent staffing levels. There's a joke kind of around this this area of the Inland Empire. And they say, if you have to get sick or injured, do it on Ontario. Do it in Ontario because they have the manpower and the equipment to take care of the emergency in the best possible way. Now, am I a little bit biased? Do I think I work for the best fire department in the best city? Yes, I do. So the patient's transported.
Now, who would like to see them cut the rest of this car apart? Who wants to see them cut the roof off this car and make it a convertible? Okay, let's do it. taking their time, going a little bit slower than normal so that you can all watch. That only took about five minutes. 